Well, good morning to you, good morning. It is, oh, what day is it? Should remember this one. The 11th of the 11th, 2019. Uh, Remembrance Day, Armistice Day, call it what you will. And that means that instead of me getting up and dragging about until I start a bit of building work, I've got to think about some other things today. Now, I'm going to start with a little bit of a dig at a very sweet dear chap who gives lots of us lots of advice. He knows who he is. Uh, we're friends on Facebook and YouTube. And checking my social media, like all of us kids do every morning, I find that he... He was offering some advice to a gentleman and he said, would you use a 50 year old shaver? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't. Um, when I shave this morning, I'm going to be using an 80 year old shaver. So there we are. I better strop this and put a decent edge on it. And uh, then I shall make myself presentable. Um, you know, scrape the scrape the little stubbly bits off my chin. Very important in this part of France. This morning, I'm going to be mixing with a lot of veterans, a lot of elderly folk. And as you know, the French, when they greet people they know, it's a kiss on each cheek. I think it's just polite to make sure that you've had a shave before you do it. Anyway, let's get on with, with the day. Today is the 11th of November 2019. Um, it's a funny day to talk about. Uh, most of the people who survived the 11th of November 1918 found it very difficult to talk about what had happened in the previous four years. A good friend made the point that remembering is, and I, I paraphrase, remembering uh, events like the First World War, like the Second World War, is all very well uh, and we don't take anything away from that but of course the important thing is learning the lessons um, we can all learn dates we can all learn facts you know the first world war started for the british on the 4th of august 1914 um, the major fighting finished on the 11th of November 1918. I learnt those things at school. Uh, the Second World War for the British started on the 3rd of September 1945. I struggle a bit with the date that it ended because, of course, we might think about the 8th of May 1945 or some date in August 1945 as, as, as to when that particular war finished. But for many, many people, of course, it never finished. Um, my father's father, my grandfather, he served in, uh, in Flanders in the First World War. He was in the machine gun corps. Uh, he never spoke about it. He never spoke to my father or my uncle. And as far as I know, his brothers who also uh, served in the trenches in Flanders, they didn't speak about it either because for them it was an unspeakable event. I suspect that we can fairly say that my grandfather killed many, many people. Uh, 
impossible not to if you were in the machine gun corps. You know, you sat behind a, a Vickers medium machine gun and you pressed the trigger and bullets came out the other end at the same time that other chaps were running towards you, presumably firing bullets in your general direction. My grandfather survived without a physical injury. I don't know whether he came away with other injuries. I, I don't know. I suspect he did. And of course it must have been horrible for him and all of those millions of people like him to see so few years later the start of what we now call the Second World War. So what we're going to do shortly is we're, we're going to go and look at a war memorial. We'll go and read some of the names on it. Yes, we will remember them. We'll honour their memory. But I think the best and greatest way that we can honour the memory of all people who suffered as a result of war is always in our everyday lives to think how do we stop future conflicts. I was taught many years ago that in on every day since the Second World War British servicemen have been fighting against other people uh, because of the people that taught me this history we think about the men of the Royal Air Force Regiment that spent many years fighting in bits of Arabia that, that we might call the Trucial States we might think about the Yemen, Aden. We think about those places, but of course for the French, and you know, I'm speaking to you from France, we might think about Djibouti or Niger or um, all of those places where the French have been involved in conflict. And we need to try somehow collectively to strive against the need for men to kill other men. Anyway, let's go look at the war memorial. Well, that was the church bell chiming for nine o'clock. The town today is a peaceful place, lovely place, friendly people. It hasn't always been. Uh, in fact, this part of France has been involved in assorted wars going all the way back through history. Uh, you know, today is the Saints' Day for St. Martin of Tours. Uh, now, Tours was the centre of quite an unpleasant punch-up. Um, oh, way back in the 800s. And it's, it's always been the case here that it's been surrounded by different people uh, that have felt a need to occupy and steal and, and, and generally cause mayhem and warfare. Now this square is the Place Verdun, uh, named after a horrible terrific battle uh, in the First World War and it's called the Place Verdun because many, many people from this town found themselves in the French army going off to Verdun uh, where, uh, you know, they were thrown into the line and 
many, many of them were killed. This memorial shows the names of those chaps and if you if you do a quick count on them you'll find that there's I think there's 92 people from this town were killed in the First World War 92 people from a town then of around about 2000 they were the young men they were the fit men they were the farm laborers the blacksmiths the Atelier, the, 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 the people that the town depended on. And they were called in the French army. And, you know, we can argue about the semantics as to whether they gave their lives or whether they had their lives stolen from them. But it ripped a huge hole in the fabric of this community. I would suggest it's never recovered. Now, of course, we then have some names from the Second World War. We will meet in this town friends of those people, friends who remember them. Um, that's the big difference these days between the First and Second World Wars. No one remembers personally the men that were die uh, that, that died or came back wounded from the first world war but there are people here who very much remember olivier paquin gaston goblet and octave palmenti we'll meet with some of those today and uh, yeah we will no doubt shed a few tears and this is the equally sad memorial in Mezières en Brenne again the names of the young men who left the town never to return. You can see they're getting ready for a celebration shortly. Well people are starting to arrive. Uh, regrettably it's raining today. Uh, yeah, that dampens us a little. But if we remember the circumstances in which our grandparents, our great grandparents fought, I don't think a little bit of rain should put us off. You know, when we think about the battles in Flanders, one of the things we remember very often is the mud. We won't be standing in mud this morning. <laughs> Things are slowly beginning to get organised, but as you can see, we're suffering with the rain and people are, people are greeting one another like old friends, which they are, of course. But very shortly we will sort ourselves out for the ceremony and I, uh, <laughs> I, won't be, um, I won't be filming that because I shall be sort of in my own little way taking part. These folk arriving now are our local pompier. These are volunteer firefighters and, well, they don't do more than just fight fire. Yeah. Mm. 
After the ceremony, after the wreaths were laid, the mayor, Madame Le Maire, uh, she made a long speech, a very typical speech for mayors at events like this. Remember the sacrifice, remember the loss, the suffering, strive for a better world. Only she said it in enough words that she took about 10 minutes to say it. Nothing I disagreed with at all. Um, we must remember what has gone before, but more importantly, we must always strive for what comes next. Anyway, we got thoroughly soaked, so then she invited us all into the town hall to warm up and to have drinks and nibbles, which was very, very sociable. Uh, yeah, it's a sombre event. Um, we spoke about our personal memories of various events. One or two people said, oh, it's a shame it rained today, but we were able to remember 
that we were only out in the rain for an hour. During the First World War, people like my grandfather, like the grandparents of those people that I've been with this morning, they stood in the rain for months, years, sometimes up to their necks in mud. The French word, boo, uh, means the same thing, mud, that horrible, sticky, cloying mud that so characterised much of Flanders, northern France. So it's been a good day, it's been a, uh, been a thoughtful day, but we remember that tomorrow is another day. The sun will come up and we go on. There we are.